What's going on, everybody? Welcome in Fantasy Alarm TV. I'm your host, Howard Bender. Welcome to Three Point Play, a nice one on one debate between fantasy analysts here at Fantasy Alarm. Now, uh, my undefeated record so far has me uh, just stay in the course here and just picking these guys off one by one. I've had my ways with James Grande, Matt Sell, Steve Pimentel. Next up on the docket, you guys have seen him over at Table That Discussion. He's the chief marketing officer for Fantasy Alarm. He also does some great picks for NBA, soccer, you name it, over at wageralarm.com. My man, Edward Rouse. Edward, how are you? You know what? I'm doing wonderful, Howard. Thank you for having me. I'm going to Eli Manning you today in your undefeated record. That's what I'm gonna really? Do. You're going to look at me like really quizzically with your mouth wide open wondering what happened? No, I'm just going to try to pass the ball as close as I can to David Tyree and hopefully I can knock you off. <laughs> uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. Now, for those of you who are new to three-point play, it's very simple. We take three topics of discussion in both fantasy and reality sports. We each take a side of the debate. You have to make, this is the only rule, you have to make three valid separate points to support your argument. If you don't make three, well, you get disqualified from that round. You guys out there, you tweet us at Fantasy Alarm, uh, at Roto Buzz Guy, at Ed Rouse, Edward Rouse, E D W A R D R A U S. Tag us. You tell us who won the debate here. Edward, are you ready to go? I mean, lose. I mean, go. Let's, I mean, let's lose. Do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's start off number one here. Recently, the uh, the Atlanta Braves dive in for a one year, thirteen million dollar contract. They sign left handed pitcher Dallas Keuchel. I ask you, Edward. I don't know which side you're on, but are you in favor? Is this a good or a bad signing for the Braves? I think it's a bad signing for the Braves. Actually, I don't like this signing at all. I think he should have gone to New York. The Yankees, personally, I don't like what the Braves are doing here. Um, I just, a one-year rental for a player. I mean, I don't even think the Braves are really in contention for a World Series. Um, and it's just, I don't like what, I, it's, what, 13 million because you got to prorate it. His his peripherals have been going down since his, you know, his Cy Young Award winning season. And, you know, what does it do to the psyche of the young prospects they have? They have one of the best uh, um, prospects in you know teams in baseball like with the Padres, the Padres are full of offensive talent. Some pitching, the Braves are known for their pitching talent. They brought in a few guys like Bryce William and Kyle Wright. Did barely even gave them a chance to even cr crack the roster. Sent them back down. So what does it do to the psyche for them as well? I don't like it. I just don't like it in general. And I say he ends up stinking it up by the All Star break. Oh, okay. All right. Well. I, uh, I'm going to take the other side of this debate. Obviously, I'm going to take the other side of this debate. I'm going to tell you that this is actually going to be a good thing for the Braves here. Number one, this pat pitching staff is desperate need of a veteran anchor. Desperately. Who are the veterans on this uh, on this pitching staff right now? I mean, it's Julio Teran and, uh, and, and Kevin Gossman, two guys who are just known to be gas cans on the mound. Uh, to me, these youngsters, they need a guy to look up to. They need a guy to say, all right, tell them that even though they're, they're being sent down or even if they're struggling, he's going to explain to them the way of the world. Tell them it's okay. Guys like Kyle Wright sent down because they're not throwing strikes. Dallas Keuchel loves throwing strikes. Dallas Keuchel is going to help bolster these kids and, and give them the veteran anchor they need. Uh, number two, want to talk about here, uh, the neck issue. It is resolved. It is okay now. He's gotten full medical clearance. The Braves did their due diligence here, looking at what's been happening. And if you understand that, yes, his peripherals have dropped over the last couple of seasons here, including on you know, that strikeout rate is just not what it used to be. To me, I think that this is going to be a, a good thing now. He's fully healthy. The neck issue is gone. There's no pinched nerve. He's feeling. He's got full feeling in his arm. He's not dealing with any of that dead arm issue. Uh, so I think health-wise, uh, he's spot on. Point number three, listen, I think that being in the National League is going to be huge for him. Huge for him. Not to mention the NL East where he gets to face tomato can lineups like the Mets and the Marlins. That ground ball rate. 
is going to play so well for him. He's got better D. He's got good, solid defense behind him. I'm not a big Josh Donaldson fan, but Dansby Swanson's range can kind of help pick up the slack there. On the other side of the field, Freddie Freeman, Ozzie Albies, uh, defensively sound there. So I think that that this all plays and that this trip to the uh, to the National League is exactly what Keuchel needs to get himself back on track. Yeah, I, I could. I mean, he can have a great year, but I don't think he's going to have a great year in the National League cause, <laughs> because you got to think, even with that injury, too, now he has to hit. He's going to go out there and just not swing the bat. They're going to just ah, take. Ah, come on. You saw Randy Johnson hit. The dude was just like, <laughs> uh, just stand here and uh, just hack away. Uh. Yes. On the bright side, he does get the pitching spot on the other side. So maybe his, you know, K rate will go from six maybe to, to 6.5 per per. Per nine there. <laughs> oh, well, see, a, a strikeout increase according to Edward Rouse. So, half, half listen, your, your honor, the defense rests. And I think it's time that we moved on to a second question here. Now, Edward, you are our resident soccer aficionado. Uh, you've been doing some stuff over at Wager Alarm for, uh, for the Champions League uh, bets over there. I'm sure we're going to be talking a lot of EPL, uh, a little premiership action. So, Fantasy soccer, Edward, yay or nay? And I'm going to start off by saying nay. Uh uh-uh. uh. Please, for the love that's all, all that is holy, understand your limitations, fantasy world. Number one, there's not enough scoring for strong fantasy play. Soccer is so limited when it comes to counting stats that, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Cross kicks, goals. I mean, it's like, you know, a game goes 0-0, zero, zero, and we're totally cool with it. 0-0, zero, zero, no problem there. So what are we relying on here as far as scoring categories? Goalkeeper saves? Maybe. How many times do these guys miss the nets? There's just there's not enough counting stats for this to really snowball and work like some of these other sports do. Number two, dude, flopping makes this game unwatchable unwatchable we see guys take dives in hockey every so often we see the uh the fake injuries in the nfl but those are a rare occurrence in soccer it is every single time there's always somebody who's flopping over exaggerating trying to draw out those yellow cards and i mean it's just it's so bad and it's so like that's one of the reasons why this sport is never going to catch on in America. You're talking about a country here that salivates over football that gave the NFL Sunday God's day for crying out loud. You think they're going to sit and watch soccer. They're going to watch a couple of guys flopping around being like, Oh, sorry, somebody hit me. No, it's not going to happen. Point number three, there is zero parody in soccer. There is zero. Pro- if you're sitting there and you've got a, a game on and it's Liverpool versus Fulham, yeah, you're stacking Liverpool, and so is everybody else. Why? Because they're, they're just the the rich are rich, the poor stay poor. There is no in between. We know basically who the top teams are when they start playing in some of these league games against the bottom feeders. And it's like, why are we going to play DFS soccer when everybody's got the exact same lineup? So to me, fantasy soccer, boring for seasonal. Don't do it for DFS. <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast there, Howard. Let me tell you why soccer's uh, one of the greatest things, not only to watch, but also play DFS with as well. There's nothing as exciting as as a soccer game for me personally and for, you know, everybody else who's not in America in the world. It's the number one watched sport in the world. The Champions League final, which was last weekend, was is the second most watched event every year um, in the world. So it shows how many people are playing. 18 percent of adults in, in Europe play fantasy soccer in some way. I keep on want to call it football, but I want to throw everyone off here. Fantasy soccer in some way. And you want to talk about flopping and, and over-exaggerating a foul? Have you watched the NBA? No, you know, hit him just the NBA on the arm, sucks as much as soccer. And, goes, <laughs> and it's the same thing. Everyone wants to exaggerate everything to try to get whatever they can to make their team better or their, you know, win the game. It's all. It's not just soccer. Yeah, the flops are kind of – sometimes they're funny. You won't even get touched. You flop to the ground. I'll admit it's kind of funny to watch. It's part of the game just like fouling is in the NBA. Um, and, you, and you know what? I like the less stats actually to me make it easier to play for a lot of people, especially people who enjoy fantasy but don't want to 
know about Woba and want to go through all this stuff about baseball that just takes forever to do all, lefty versus righty, all these splits. How about just basic stats, which just makes it easier to create a lineup or easier to just to play in general because there's less you have to worry about, you know? And um, the best thing, too, is you fantasy early in the morning. You wake up early. You just had a kid like me. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. There's nothing going on. There's no UFC in in Sweden today. Well, guess what? There's a soccer game on somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, especially for wagering, that is the best. You can start early in the morning, and I love it. I just love soccer. I'm I'm a huge Liverpool fan. But real quick to iterate your point on um, lineups the same way. You can say the same thing about stacking Coors Field. It, it's a game at Coors Field. Everyone's going to play the same players, the same as Liverpool playing Fulham. But if you're smart enough, you look for the Crystal Palaces and the and the teams and the the Watfords that score a lot of points and are playing each other on a, a different time of the spectrum, and you can find a way to win. Because Crystal know. Palace isn't that a vodka company in New Jersey? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it might be. You have to check that out. Listen, man, I just I, you know I find it very difficult for for us to get on board with it here uh, because there is no scoring because the 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 stats are are low. So you're saying basically that hey we're into soccer here for fantasy purposes because there aren't all these cumbersome stats we have to plod through so would you suggest, would you be saying then that fantasy soccer is the millennials fantasy sport here i wouldn't be saying that for say um i think it's close i, I think uh, ufc too would definitely be in on that list uh, you know as as that is getting bigger and bigger every week, especially now we have ESPN plus where there's literally a fight every weekend and, and DFS going on for that as well. But, um, you know, I, the one goal means so much. If you have the player that scores the goal, it just means so much to, to your lineups. It's, it's, it's a, it's a overly exciting. So yeah, the scoring's limited, but if you get that goal and he's on your team, it means more than, Oh, I got an early Freddie Freeman home run. Cause it, cause anything can happen after that. So the, the goals mean more. I think that's what makes it more exciting. See, I would have totally conceded this entire argument had you actually screamed goal like an announcer, took your shirt off, and ran around your home studio there, and then <laughs> sat for the final debate uh, shirtless with what I can only imagine is like a reddish-brown shag carpet you've got going on around the chesticles, huh? It would be my strawberry blonde hair, yes. That is right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Point number three of, of contention here, fantasy kickers. How many times do we have to listen to this argument over and over again? Do we get rid of fantasy kickers? Do we keep fantasy kickers? I think the world is a, is a little split on the 50-50, but I would actually say that maybe the majority of them Turn around and say we should get rid of the kickers. Edward, what side of the argument are you on? Well, this is the non-millennial side of me, actually. I <laughs> I say keep the kicker. I say let the kickers kick um, for you know, three reasons. One, uh, all the NFL all-time leading scores are kickers. Like the top 20 are all kickers. Adam Vinatieri, number one, of course. Kicking is a huge part of the game, that especially the final score and the final outcome of the game. Um, number two, call me old school, traditional fantasy, how it was invented, all the positions, including a kicker. I like having the quarterback, the running back, the receiver, the tight end, and the kicker as they was made, as it was done, the old school, traditional. I don't like when there's like 40 utility spots or three quarterbacks. Just the traditional way to play to me is the most fun and most strategic of how you draft and um, instead of just like, oh, I don't need a kicker, so I'm just going to pick up all these guys at the end and hope one hits, that's more of like it's turning it more into like a best ball, even on seasonal drafts, and I don't like that. And um, number three is is just, again, with the points, tight ends. Why do we have tight ends then? Or the or the defense where you pick a team. If anything, that should be the one to go. If you're not doing IDP, just get rid of the, the defense because the kicker is still part of the offense. Fantasy only offense. And tight end, actually, kicker scored more points in fantasy last year then tight ends did combined you take the combined kickers and the combined tight ends kickers scored more points fantasy points and that's even if you take away the five points for the 50 still scored more points so i think kickers should be an important part and they're kind of uh not taken as seriously as they should there in fantasy football 
All right. Well, yeah, I am definitely on the other side there and say, get rid of these guys. Really? Do we really need them? Is it necessary? I think what, one of the things that we learned in the Alliance of American Football is, A, stop trying to create a new football league, but B, we don't need the kickers there. Now, yes, they were still kicking field goals, but they were missing field goals left and right as well. Listen, we, we look at these guys in the NFL, and, and I'm sorry, but they're completely unreliable. I guess that'll be my first point, is that they are 100% unreliable. Drafting and dealing with a kicker, okay, is almost as nightmarish as chasing saves on the waiver wire. Because one day he's there, the next day he misses a field goal, and he's cut. And that's just a nightmare. Number two, it gives people some inane, stupid reason to put negative points for a missed field goal or a mixed extra point. Guess what? Missed points are always what we're about here. We sit and deal with this all the time. These guys miss continuously. So now all of a sudden now we're going to like create uh, a, a reason to have negative points because this guy, uh, they move the extra point back to make it more difficult. I mean, really? Is that what we want? So, so we're basically asking to have negative points thrown into our scores. And then number three, there's no strategy to drafting one of these guys. Let's face it. Oh, yeah, you know, I like the guys with the uh, on the highest scoring offenses. They're usually the ones that, that we want. Oh, yeah, those high scoring offenses just scored four touchdowns and they gave you no field goal opportunities. So what'd you get? You got four points if you made all of your extra points. Four points. Come on, man. That's ridiculous. I could have like half a running back run for, for that kind of yardage and get those points here. There's no stretch. Their offense is going to stall inside the red zone, so therefore they're going to get more field goal opportunities. Really? Is that how people are really looking at kickers right now? No. People sit there at the end of their draft. They leave kicker and defense for the most part. Uh, to the very end, and they leave kicker to the final round, and they usually just take the stupid kicker who's uh, who's the, either considered the best on the board, the guy who put up the most points last year, or they just take the guy from their home team. It's how I always get a slice of my New York Jets in fantasy from the kicker. Please, dude. Well, I mean, you would have had more points if you would have taken Farbarn last year than that kicker from the Jets. I don't even know who that was. So I'll tell you that right now. Exactly. <laughs> nobody knows who the kickers are because nobody cares about them. Yeah, but, but you could say this, okay, negative points, negative points. If a quarterback throws an interception, it's a negative points. I'm in a league where drop passes are negative points, and drop passes lose points too. You could say the same thing about a missed field goal, missed opportunity is a dropped pass from Amari Cooper when he was on the Raiders huh, in the red zone. It's the same type of thing. You could do. You can choose any position, tight end, and do missed negative points for almost anything this guy far right, but we don't want to points. why would we want to do that why do you want negative points interceptions and fumbles okay those are detrimental those are turnovers but i mean come on a missed extra point or I a dropped pass we want to penalize people why are you so negative edward i'm not i don't play in a league like that i'm just saying you could <laughs> you could choose anything to do trust me there i I've, I've seen some league settings where just like wow I, you know it's just insane what people are doing nowadays and I, i'm old school when it comes to fantasy i've been playing since fifth grade and i still like the old way of doing it and that's why i still like the kicker like, that's, oh see you're so all of a sudden you've gone from millennial to old man shaking his fist at a bunch <laughs> of clouds right now huh? that's pretty much how it is when two court i hate two quarterback we'll talk you about give me there. my fantasy kickers and one quarterback and forget <laughs> this ppr nonsense i can't deal with it i will say that justin tucker would be a smart pick to pick every year as a kicker because he's been consistently in the top five for the last five years Right. Well, as my boy John and Pebble would say, he's no Steven Goskowski. Uh, he was the fifth number five kicker last year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tell us what you guys think at Fantasy Alarm on Twitter, at Edward Rouse, at Roto Buzz Guy. Kickers, yay or nay? Do you want them? Do you not want them? Give us a shout. Let us know who won these debates here. For my man, Edward Rouse, for my producer, John and Pemba, I'm Howard Bender of Fantasy Alarm TV's Three Point Play. We'll catch you next time.